Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the coin. As you can see, one of the breaking news that's been circulating around today has been Andre Santos will return to Chelsea this week. Crystal Palace are interested. This has been um, the case for a little while now. We've known that the loan spill at Nottingham Forest is not going to continue. Uh, obviously, Nottingham Forest has gone through some managerial changes, so things are a little bit volatile over there. They are fighting in the relegation battle. They're not interested to provide any minutes for our player, Andre Santos, to develop, only for him to come back. Look, under uh, Steve Cooper, I believe, when he was around, um, he, he was quite clear that, look, you know, we're in the business to, to get three points and we're in relegation battle. Um, if we have the opportunity to give him some time, we will, but it's not the biggest priority. So I, I don't know why we sent him to Nottingham Forest. I think from the get-go, this was a mistake. Um, but now it looks like he's going to come back to Chelsea. That is the right thing to do. No reason for him to continue at Nottingham Forest when he's not going to get, you know, any game time at all, zilch game time, best to return back. But Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace, ladies and gentlemen, this is what, keep it in your mind, we're going to come back to this news. First up, what we want to talk about is breaking. Ben Chilwell and Kani Chukamika have returned to tra team training, literally PYS just tweeted that out about an hour ago. Good to see both Ben Chilwell and Chukamika returning back to team training, which is a big news. We've got quite a bit of days off until the Preston game. And then, um, you know, after the Preston game, there's a few games that are that are coming thick and fast, but games that we should be winning. It, there shouldn't be any big dramas. And then after that, there's again a big gap until, I believe, the Liverpool game at the end of this month. So look, Ben Chilwell and Chukamika, a couple of important players. Ben Chilwell... It'll be interesting to see. He is the vice captain, so does he come straight back into the team? Obviously, he's not going to be returning back starting immediately. He'll probably feature off the bench, get some minutes, get himself match sharp, match fit again. But Levi Colwell has been deputizing in the left-back position. He seems to be the go-to left-back person for Maurizio Pochettino. Pochettino, one of the biggest reasons he likes Levi Colwell in that position is because of his height and also the fact that he can turn that back four into a back three with Levi Colwell potentially playing as an LCB. So, but that's not necessarily how we've been playing most of the times. Uh, there are times that we look at Levi Colwell and we hope uh, or, or we, we kind of pray that, come on, make that bombing run up and down and give that left winger some options. But at the end of the day, Levi Cowell is simply not a left back. And he's been getting smoked as well on that left side on a regular basis up against opposition wingers. So is Pochettino going to deploy Ben Chilwell as a left back? I don't understand why Poch just for a second doesn't apply genuine left backs to play in left back positions like your Ian Martin, Ben Chilwell earlier in the season when he was fit. He was actually playing as a left winger. So... It will be interesting to see exactly how Ben Chilwell is deployed. I still think his best position is left back. But is the height going to be an issue? I mean, Ben Chilwell, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, ladies and gentlemen, in the comment section. His aerial stats, like his aerial jewels one stats is, are actually pretty good. He's aerially quite quite solid. Um, just like every other fullbacks, they, they always, they, their biggest weakness is when you bomb forward, you've got to be able to bomb right back uh, to help out in defense, especially when there's a counterattack and there are certain times where he may get caught out. I'm not saying that Ben Chilwell is uh, some sort of a you know lazy player when he bombs up, he doesn't want... No, he's actually got good recovery and good recovery pace as well. But that's just what's going to happen with, with any sort of fullback. So is Pochettino worried about that, that he doesn't want a traditional fullback that's just going to bomb forward from the right side and from the left side. Maybe he wants one of them to be reserved. As I said, will be interesting to see how Poch deploys Ben Chilwell. He is the vice captain of the football club. Now, Chukamika, on the other hand, I'm very, very excited to see this brother back. I don't know why. Like Initially, they said it was going to be three weeks, so... The medical staff, the medical you know, department of Chelsea Football Club once again needs to be looked at properly. What has gone wrong with Chukamika? For him to be out for so long after the initial diagnosis was, he's probably going to be out for about three to four weeks. He's now been out for at least four months, I'd say. So 
glad he's returned back to team training. He's actually someone I truly rate, man. His quality, technical ability, his ability to score goals, his ability to play in midfield. Someone who I feel like can be deployed in many different positions, whether it's up front in any of the wingers or winger position or second striker position. He's played that just behind Nicholas Jackson or in midfield, whether it's a number eight, whether it's a number 10. He's got that ability. So it, once again, you know, the competition is quite um, immense in that position. Nicholas, so yeah, well, Nicholas Jackson actually is also putting up his hand in that same position. Christopher Nkunku is back. He'll be putting up his, um, you know, uh, intentions to play in that position. Cole Palmer, we know, plays in attacking positions, you know, it, it, just behind the striker. And Chukumika similarly as well. So, you know, it's great to have these players back. I'm very, very happy. But at the same time, now the competition will really get immense and uh, Maurizio Pochettino will potentially have a headache uh, when, when choosing the 11 for, for each match week. So, look, it's a good headache to have. And I hope what comes out from this is the, the competition that's going to be fostering amongst the group. Hopefully, that will push everyone to reach the next level. Now, coming back to that Andre Santos situation, ladies and gentlemen, look, I feel like we have a massive due diligence to look after his career. I truly rate this player as well, man. Honestly, I do. From what we've seen in the preseason, this guy is a very, very handy uh, midfielder, someone who can play as the deepest midfielder. He would have been a direct uh, substitute, I believe, for Enzo Fernandez. We don't have someone like Enzo Fernandez in our team. On top of that, you know, is, is someone like Enzo Fernandez actually fancied by Pochettino? Is this the reason why Andre Santos is getting loaned down? Because at the end of the day, Maurizio Pochettino simply can't figure out a way how to utilize Enzo Fernandez. Now, if you have someone who's similar to him, he's going to have the same issues once again. That's, you know, it's just not uh, the same sort of, you know, he doesn't want that type of a player. Now, Andre Santos, he can play as a deepest midfielder, but at the same time, he can play as, as, as an eight as well. And Look, his South American, Brazilian background, he's got that dog in him. I would say instead of throwing him around in different places like Palace and so on and so forth, Nottingham Forest, let's take the opportunity for this upcoming second part of the season and actually utilize him. Give him minutes off the bench in the second half to relieve some, you know, some pressure off our midfielders. And just grow him in-house, develop him in-house. We already have issues in midfield in the likes of, you know, there are times where Enzo Fernandez gets injured. You know, we can't just be using Caicedo and Gallagher game in, game out. They will burn out. So, and I would probably prefer Uguchuku being the one to go out on a loan. But do you know what the crazy part is? Uguchuku is the exact kind of player profile that Pochettino probably wants in midfield physical um, you know, it's got that, it's got that you know, tall structure about him as well. And and Pochettino loves height. One thing that's probably going against Santos is he lacks height. So, look, we'll see what happens with Andre Santos. I get the feeling he's probably going to go out on a loan, but I don't want to ruin this guy's future, man. Like it seems like he's going to be loaned around here and there and everywhere, and he's not going to be developing. Um, and he's potentially going to be one of those players that eventually it will clock. And he'll just say, do you know what? I'm just going to move on from Chelsea. And I won't be surprised if down the track someone like Barcelona comes in and, and goes for him. So watch this space. Let me know if you guys are keen on the Crystal Palace loan move for Andre Santos. I'm not really sure whether he's going to get game time over there, but we'll see. I mean, there's a couple of really good ballers in the likes of Olise and Ize, but... Is Santos actually going to get game time? That is the biggest factor. No point in going to Palace and then same thing happens where he just doesn't get game time. So let me know, ladies and gentlemen, what you think about Palace, another particular team that's fighting in the relegation battle. Last but not least, a couple of news that I want to go through, which I will spend more time in tomorrow's live stream. I did think about doing a um, members call-in, but all you can eat, eat Chelsea episode is lined up for tomorrow. So... How much time am I going to have after that? Probably not. I do want to have quite a bit of time for members calling. So maybe we'll have members calling for Thursday. Uh, but these are some things that I probably might want to catch either on a stream or a video tomorrow. Chelsea, I understood to have watched players like Seru, Goresi, Santiago Jimenez and Benjamin Seska, among others. Ivan Tony and Victor Osiman are deemed as difficult to obtain in January. Look, if that's the case, this will really annoy me. Honestly, this will annoy me. 
if we can't get Victor Ossiman or Ivan Tony, even on a pre-agreement for them to then join next season, and then if we don't do that and we end up getting one of these brothers, this is exactly what I want to stay away from. Duresi, Jimenez, Sesco. Sesco doesn't even start for Leipzig. What's he going to do here? Jimenez and Guresi, I've not heard of these brother brothers before this season. So are these one-hit wonders? I'm not really sure about that. So, look, I've always maintained, if it's not Tony or Ossiman, Dominic Solanke, man. Dominic Solanke. Some of you guys will say, oh, my God, he's a one-hit wonder. No, he's not. No, he's not. Do your research. This particular player is on the rise. But, look, we're not connected with him, but this is something we're going to talk about uh, tomorrow. As I said, I don't want to see these Goresis and Jimenezes and Sescos in the team. Might as well just roll our dice again with, with Jackson and Broya and, and, and Kunku up front if that's the case because no point in wasting our money and our efforts to bring one of these brothers. I personally feel they just need to show more in, in, in the top level. Last but not least, Borussia Dortmund are in negotiations with Chelsea for Ian Martin. It's still pending over Chelsea's asking price. And if it's a loan, Chelsea want it with an obligation clause. The fixed price should be around $26 million. I think that is roughly the right price, I feel, for Ian Martin. Don't forget he had a brilliant season in the championship last season. This season is just out of favour. Surplus to requirements. I think a move to Borussia Dortmund will be fantastic for him. It's the kind of club that will appreciate the skill set that Ian Martin's going to bring to that team. They play with attacking fullbacks, wingbacks at times. I think uh, recently, you know, Rafael Guerrero was there and he's moved on um, to a different team. So someone like Ian Martin will fit in nicely. So watch this space. Ian Martin most likely on the way out. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of today's uh, latest in Chelsea news. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I shall see you guys in All You Can Eat Chelsea tomorrow, plus a live stream or maybe a video after that. So until then, everyone, take care and see ya.